these artistic works of Buddhists interpreting Christianity uh, <coughs> is based on a missiological principle uh, which is the contrary of uh, the traditional missiology. Uh, in the traditional missiology, the church tells the Buddhist who Christ is. We do the opposite, we ask the Buddhists who Christ is. They tell us who Christ is and in that dialogue, we not only know who Christ is for them, but also who Christ is for us in Asia. So, this is a kind of a dialogue with artists who hold, believe in another religion, but uh, find Christ as an excellent object of both uh, artistic uh, appreciation and of religious devotion. So, all these people who have made these, these depictions of Christ either on the, in murals, in clay or in paintings, uh, have given us a message that if we want to speak of Christ even among ourselves, there is a language to be used and these Buddhists have given us the language. This embossment, mural embossment is, is unique in the history of the world in the sense that this is the first time that a Buddhist monk has ever uh, presented a picture of Christ in painting, sculpture or in any other art form. Uh, <clears throat> and this was his first picture of Christ and, and with this he began painting a lot of other pictures, some of which were printed in the Miserio Lenten uh, calendar. Here you see the, he has depicted the, his interpretation of course of the washing of the feet by Jesus Christ. He has taken the common meal that the monks are invited to in a home, in a normal Buddhist ethos. It's meritorious to give a meal to monks and the monks normally come with their begging bowls in their hands. It's a sign they are mendicants. They don't have any possessions of their own. They live by begging their food. And uh, normally in Sri Lanka, when they come in procession with their begging bowls for a lunch, the, uh, a servant of the house normally washes their feet before they enter. And here see the master of the house entering. And the monk has presented uh, through various mudras. Mudras are again dramatic gestures of the hand which are used in normal dramas. Uh, mudra he uses is don't, I won't allow it. This is not done because master shouldn't wash the feet of his disciples, the disciples should wash the feet of his mother. That's our culture. It's normally the disciples who do all services to the master, not the other way about. Here, he has gone against the culture of the place. He is washing the feet. Then he has put another picture here of two women. One a high class, the other one low class. You can see from the dress. A uh, person who is familiar with Buddhist temple art can immediately recognize the class difference between the two women. And of course, the other gesture is something extraordinary, funny, out of the way is happening. Now, this is how through art forms of the past, traditional art form, the Buddhist monk has brought out the uniqueness of the washing of the feet even within Christianity, are much more in the Asian culture. It's a revolution. Again, there is another difference 
it is the rice and water with the lamb which means it's a supper now buddhist monks never take supper they normally take their lunch so in a way the artist has shown something christian is happening but in a buddhist way so the mendicants are coming washing of the feet is there with a revolutionary change and it is in the night so it can't be buddhist monks somebody else and normally he put two women and uh, the thing is that to what she what he brings out is that jesus is the only founder of a religion who had women in his company who was not his wife or daughter so uh, this again how a buddhist sees things that we don't see this picture presents a new fact that our uniqueness we cannot understand unless the other tells us so it is always listen to the others that we know who we are our identity cannot be presented by us it has to be detected by the others this is what is happening here a buddhist is telling us your religion has these unique points teacher washing the feet master washing the feet uh women in the company in the supper and there is no difference between low caste and no class difference in fact i told him you have done something without knowing i told the monk something you have intuited into what paul had said there is neither male nor female in christ therefore should be in christianity there should not be any difference there should not be high caste and low caste free and slave there should not be and the third and this comes out here in christ there is neither christian nor non christian you know what jew and gentile is this is a human event there is no religion here this is a message to humanity and i think this is what is coming because this monk can grasp the human in jesus because he belonged to and was the founder of the humanistic association of monks he wanted humanism to be the basis of their buddhist practice and he was fighting against class structure and racial distinction between tamils and singhalese he belonged to a group of monks who were ready to go to the north and bring justice to the minorities and his humanity come remember that god <laughs> became what jesus what you see jesus is the attempt of god to teach us how to be human human like god jesus teaches us to be human like god and here is a picture of jesus as humanity you know women and males high class low class christian non christians everything is erased his humanity comes up neither in mount garizim nor in mount jerusalem neither samaritan nor jew on his humanity we will worship god i think this is for me the most revolutionary picture here to bring out again a fact that we all is there we have the humility of god here we have the humanity of god which jesus revealed to us as the medieval uh, human is said if god could be so human why can't we be why can't the church be why can't all be this is the message of christ i think the buddhist monk as a humanist has captured this i don't think any other art as far as i know captured this message of christ so well <laughs>